Hello there and welcome to session 2 recap video for the Google G Suite training series that we are doing at Columbia Gorge Community College. Um, if you haven't watched video 1, there will be a link in the description um, that will cover the first session. So for session 2, um, what we did is we really went over the same thing as session 1, um, but then added on just a couple extra little tidbits here and there. Um, that I'm going to show you here so that way it's very uh, linear and you don't have to be seeing the same information twice. If at any point in time during this video you're confused where I where I went to or what I clicked on, feel free to pause, uh, rewind, and, and watch it, that part again. Um, this video is going to be based um, on the fact that you've already watched session one recap video, um, so that really is very important to watch that um, to make sure that you don't fall behind. So step number one, um, sign into Google, uh, and I will use a test account here. So now that we log in, here we are on just the home page. Um, come up here to the Google Apps menu and click on Drive. These menu items may be in a different spot, depending on if, you, if you've customized um, your your Google Apps menu or not. So inside of Drive, um, during session two, again, we talked about the same type of stuff as session one, how to create files and folders and all that stuff, but one thing we really jumped into a little bit more in depth was the Google Slides. So I'm going to open up a blank presentation to kind of show you what that looks like. So if you open up a blank presentation, um, immediately over on the side will give you some different themes you can choose from. That one looks pretty good, so I'll go with that one for right now and I'll exit out. So uh, let's see here, what do we want to call this? We'll call this one um, example, example presentation. That sounds great. I'll say that it is by CGCC ITS. Sounds good. So now up here, this would be where we can rename. Um, we can just either click right in here and it'll take our title as the suggested, the suggested name for the presentation. And we can click out. Uh, and we'll save automatically. We can also add and change this here and we can add other things onto here just fine. Um, any point in time if you want to you can add speaker notes just as if you were using PowerPoint and you have a lot of the same functionality that you do inside of PowerPoint. So one of the cool things as well inside of here is your ability to do different presentations. Um, so you can present with a presenter view which might be what you're familiar to if you are inside of um, a PowerPoint in version uh, 2013 or later, um, where you can kind of really see your slides at one side and, and you can do your timings at the bottom and you can switch between things, you can pause timings, do all that fun stuff. Inside of the presentation, you'll have some tools down at the bottom that you can use to just jump into some familiar options that you might be used to. So if you got a pointer here, you can really highlight some stuff, or maybe if you wanted to jump in to look at your notes again real quick, that's how you would get to that stuff. Um, you can also come over here to uh, modify whether you're doing full screen or some other settings options, whether you'd like to just download this uh, presentation immediately right from here or to even print, things like that. You can use this to jump between different slides. We only have one at this point in time, so that's all we're showing for right now. Um, and that looks good for right now. So if you come down here to the exit button, that jumps us out of the full screen mode. Um, now again, as with any Google Doc, Sheet, or Slide application, um, the tools might look or um, be found in a different location than what you're used to on a Microsoft Office platform. So at any point in time under the Help menu, you can always search here. Uh, for example, if we wanted to highlight this example presentation, but we didn't quite know where to find it on the menu, we can come up under Help and we can just start typing in Highlight, Color, let's do Cyan. Sounds great. Bam. Don't know why you would want to do that, but you have the option to do that and that's the important thing. So we'll use the undo button and just take that away. So that's kind of how slides works. Um, I don't know where else we would go to here. Don't really need that. One other cool feature inside of slides is the ability to add comments to things. Uh, this is a feature that exists inside of Docs and Sheets and Slides all together. Um, so it's just one of those cool things where, for example, if we wanted to highlight this word example here, and we wanted to come in and add a comment to it, we could do that. Um, and these are things that 
we could assign to different people if it's an action item or if we wanted to just clarify something for someone. For example, if we had another uh, slide in here that maybe if it had some different um, figures or things like that, like if it said 2017 through uh, 2020, and we weren't quite sure if that was the correct set of dates, um, we could always highlight that one, come into a comment, and we could ask someone here by tagging them whether we thought that was the proper thing or not. So when you're making a comment, you can tag people. And what happens when you tag people is uh, if they don't have access to the document, or in this case, this slide, um, what it will do is it will actually give them access, but it will a it'll ask you for, for clarification right off the bat, whether you want to share this document with the person if you tag them, or if you just want to make a comment that includes someone's name. And the way to do that is you can do it with either an at symbol or a plus sign. So for example, if I wanted to say at, um, we'll put Erica Garcia at cgcc.edu. Now this again, this is a test user. This person doesn't exist. We can comment that way. And this is where we'll ask us um, how we want to do this. So in this case, we'll say share and comment. So she'll have access to this document now, or this slide now. Um, but we could also, if we wanted to, instead of doing a at symbol, we could also do a plus. And it really, it acts in the same way. Um, either, either symbol will, will tag a person successfully and we'll send them an email notification saying that, hey, they've been, they've been uh, shared a document and a comment has been made about them inside of here. Inside of Google Slides, you have the ability to ask for Q&A or question and answer. Um, you can do that by coming up into here, and we didn't really talk about this too much inside of the actual training session, so this is just a little bonus. But if you want to, you can start new, and what this does is you have the ability to accept questions um, or even comments. It's, it defaults to say questions, but it's really any notes that anyone wants to give to you. Um, the default is at Columbia Gorge Community College, um, but we can make that to anyone if we want, um, and that just allows us for some confirmation. We'll keep it to Columbia Gorge Community College for right now. So it's kind of hidden under there, um, but it'll have a little link here that people can go to, and this is where they'll come out at. And the cool thing is, is that you can keep track of this um, during your presentation, so people can actually ask questions and you can respond to them in real time um, as your presentation's going. What it does is it, a says, uh, it, it adds a little box up at the top here with a link. Um, people who maybe were viewing this presentation remotely should be able to click on that link or if they're uh, physically there watching, they can also type that into a web browser or on a mobile device and they can get that same interface um, right here. So um, you will see these questions and other people will see questions that are entered in there so they can all follow along. So that's Google Slides. Um, other thing that we went into was Google Forms. So if you come into the more, if you go to a new item, you have Google Forms. Um, just for purposes of, of simplicity, we'll do it from a template, but you could do a, a blank form, which is the default. From a template, um, you have a lot to choose from. Um, just we'll pick one out random here. This one that's called Worksheet sounds great. Um, Google Forms, they can be used for just a myriad of different things um, where you're expecting to get information from your recipients. Um, you can add images to it, you can do file uploads if it's not stored inside of a team drive, it's in your local drive. Um, you could do multiple choice answers, short answers, check boxes. Um, it's, it's really kind of up to your imagination. Um, linear scales, even date and time. Um, so there's lots of different questions that are pre-built in that you can ask. Um, you can always grab these six uh, dots up at the top to kind of rearrange your question order. So, for example, if we wanted name, or maybe we wanted our image to come up first up here, that's great. Or maybe we don't even want an image, we can always just hit the delete button, that one goes away. Then if we are like, oh, maybe we actually did want that, we can come up here and we can add different things. Add a video, add an image, add a title or a description, add another section. Add another section, splits it into two pages, so they'll have a continue button at the bottom while they'll, it'll kind of split uh, your questions up. So that's one thing, it's really up to your preference, what you feel is best. Um, so inside of forms, again, just really like almost anything else. This is from a template, so uh, the the name of this form won't change when I change the title, but if it was from a blank one, um, it would. So like we'll just name this one example form. Clicking up here doesn't automatically change, but we can change that as well. 
This little spot under here would be a description, uh, and of course that's nonsense because that's just filler text, but that's a form description. It's totally optional. We could delete that out if we want to. It's not necessary. Um, under name, if we're like, you know what, I don't think that we need the name to be required, but we'll want their email. You always have a required slider here you can turn off or on. Um, this icon right here duplicates something, so if we want a little bit more information uh, besides name and email, maybe we wanted um, favorite color for some reason, you could do that. Um, and maybe a short answer. It'll automatically suggest, based on what you're putting in here, what it thinks might be the best uh, question type. But you could also do other things, such as like check boxes, where people can choose their favorite colors. Um, in this case, maybe multiple choice might work better, or we could say blue, green, red, yellow. Um, we could even add an option for other. So. What that's going to look like, and I'll show you real quick up here in the preview pane by clicking on this I, and that'll jump us into this form right here. And the, <laughs> the reason why the translate thing pops up is because it's still got all this garbage down here. Um, so your name, we can put it in here. We'll just enter in something. Test. My favorite color is blue. Um, sure, my email address is... Um, Looks good. Question, we'll ch and we didn't get the rest, but choose option two and maybe option one. Any questions about this? Qu you know, no questions. Looks great, like that, and we can submit it. And it'll say that response has been recorded. Perfect, we're done. So now if we come back to our form here real quick, we can see up at the top that we do have one response pending for us. So we can jump into that, and it'll show us a summary now we only have one person, which is the one we just did fill this out. So the summary versus individual is going to look just a little bit different. Um, you have a slider here to whether you want to accept responses or not. So in this way, you can turn off, for example, if there was a time period where you didn't want to receive any more responses. Um, over here, you can get email notifications about new responses. Um, download all the responses if you want to. Print them all. Delete them all if you wanted to start over again. This one right here creates a spreadsheet of the answers that came in. So we can do that. Uh, we can either choose an existing one or create a brand new one. Creating a brand new one sounds good for right now, so we'll do that. And sure enough, here we have a timestamp filled in with this person's uh, responses. So now, for example, if we come back and we try to fill it out again, and we'll say, um, Harry filled it out. He chose his favorite color as yellow. His email was Harry at that doesn't exist, but sure enough, option one, option one looks good. Um, I don't understand this. Say submit. So there we go. So we got another one in there, and if we come in here to our sheet, we'll see another one just pops in. It's just a couple seconds, and it's automatically there. I use this for the actual training sessions themselves for the feedback, so I can see in real time um, as someone gives me some feedback so I know um, how I can improve and I don't have to be hunting around or waiting for emails to come back with PDFs of people or their different responses that way. It just gives them a little simple web form that they can fill out and uh, I can get responses immediately. So other features inside of forms is the ability to really manipulate how questions are asked um, and even what the user experience is. So this was from a template so it added in these color palettes and things like that. I can choose my own image by going to this circle right here, or if I wanted to use a green kind of theme, I can do that as well. Um, under settings, this is where we can really um, kind of dive into getting some really cool things. So we can go ahead and collect email addresses. What that does is it forces the user to actually sign in first before they fill out your form. By doing that, you can actually, if you wanted to, remove an email address collection field. Or if you know people's emails well enough, you could even make a name field uh, removed. Um, it's really up to your preference. Um, new response receipts, um, what that does is basically just sends them a copy of their responses. Um, you can have it so that it's optional or just always sends it to them. Uh, if you restrict it, which requires sign-in in the same way that this one would, but this one limits it to us here at Columbia Gorge Community College, we can also say they can only fill it out once. If we want to, we have them the option to edit their form after they submit it. Um, and then if you wanted to, you could let them see other people's responses as well. Um, 
in the presentation, if you're doing a really big form, you could show a progress bar if you've got multiple different um, breaks and sections that you're going through. So that way someone doesn't feel like they're just constantly clicking next forever and it never goes anywhere. They can really see that, oh, I'm at page three of seven. Um, you can shuffle question order. Um, so for example, if this was more like a test kind of um, that you're presenting or a quiz, you could shuffle up the questions so that way it's not all the same for everyone. So you couldn't say number two is A or number three is C because um, everyone's would be different or at least randomized. Um, you can add a link to submit another response if you want. So if you're asking multiple things or you're filling out for multiple people, you can do that. Um, the default down here, you can change this to say, um, thank you so much, or whatever you want. Um, you can add a link down in here that they could go to for something else. Um, inside the quiz, this is where we can really make this a quiz and, and, and you know receive. We can automatically add in grading. Uh, now that that's set like that, we can do um, immediate results. So if it's really simple, um, multiple choice, that kind of stuff, we can give them instant feedback. And down below here, we get some other options that can really hone how we want this quiz to look. So if we save this as a quiz now, we can actually go in and add our answer key. Um, we can choose, uh, say that red should have actually been everyone's favorite color. That's really what it is, and that, that one's actually a five-point question. And we can go down, we can do that kind of stuff for everything. Um, so that's, that's an example of Google Forms and how that works. Um, Clicking on the menu option, you do get other things. We didn't really talk too much about this kind of stuff, um, but that might be something that we get into later on. So that was a quick little intro to what we went over in session two. Um, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave a, uh, send me an email. I'll put my contact information in the description as well. Um, and I hope to see you at the next session, um, which will be on the 27th of September uh, from 10 to 11 a.m. Thanks.